when I interviewed uh, Andy from Every Time I Die recently, he said that you guys are the next wave of Nirvana, and that's almost a quote, like a direct quote from him. How does that make you feel? I guess uh, I'm flattered, I, you know. Has he ever said anything like that to you guys? He's actually friends with our tour manager, Andrea. Oh, okay. Uh, so he keeps in touch with her, and I've actually, I met him uh, recently when we were on tour with uh, Boris in uh, Detroit, and mm. he was really nice. All the other dudes in the band were really nice, and yeah, they had really good things to say. Yeah. Are you big fans of Every Time I Die? Um, I don't, I don't really, like, I'm not familiar with their stuff, mm -hmm. but, I don't know, it's, music's as good as, as cool as guys that they are, it should be good, I guess. <laughs> Do you think that's something crazy to live up to? Like, like that's yeah. that's a huge. That's not something I don't. I have on my list. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys into music for? Oh, that's cool. This is the type of band where we just like make stuff up and mm -hmm. we we keep whatever we like and you know kind of like work work off somebody's idea and I don't know. I, until right now, I think everybody's pretty happy with all our songs that we've written. Are there certain goals that you want to accomplish with this band? Have fun, and make party yeah. music, yeah. <laughs> make yeah. party music, yeah. <laughs> heavy party, heavy party music. music, yeah. So what are these parties like? These crazy parties you guys talk about in Miami? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just like awesome, like small shows. Oh, you're talking about stuff. like the house shows, yeah. Like, yeah, those. Oh, like those. Okay, I, I thought you were talking about like crazy Miami parties, like what we do on the weekend. Oh, or that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, the house shows are awesome. There's like a, there's a few kids who do shows at their house and mm -hmm. do uh, like more DIY punk shows and bring touring bands through all the time and they play back there. Really? Um, Tor Torch actually has a popular t-shirt design. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a it's like a mock straight edge t-shirt, kind of like an old judge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it says not so straight on the bottom. It has a live photo of us playing, like people singing along. Like, at our friend's house. Crowd. It was at our friend's yeah. backyard. Like Torch played there. It's just a lot of fun. I think people People are just like ready to have fun, and I don't, I don't know if it's something to do that whether because it's not in a, a venue or whatever. But they're just I don't know. They have way more fun. It's less rules, I guess, you know, and less stuff to worry about. Yeah, wow. you, when you when you feel like you're at a party, the, en the energy and the vibe is totally different than being at like a club or something. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, when you're at a party, people are way more loose. So when you're at a house and someone's backyard, everyone's drinking and hanging out. And, you know, <laughs> bands are playing, great. like bands are playing, and it's fucking, it's fun. So that's kind of how we like to do it back home if we can. Do you guys ever do house parties on tour? Yeah, on days off, like let's say we're supporting a bigger band, and like there's just a day off, and the drive's not too crazy, or yeah. it's a manageable drive, and we can we know somebody in a town that's you know along the way, we'll you know contact them, and they'll set it up. Because we're, you know, it's just fun. It's yeah. Awesome. We do a small yeah. Tor Torch has played some good house shows, and basement shows across the United States and like a lot of different places, like all over. We played, uh, the, I, think, I think like the last, remember, what was the last house show we played? Do you remember? It might have been one on Warsaw. Uh, I know we did, uh, there was a tour we did uh, with, we were on tour with Black Cobra. Uh, we, uh, we were uh, going out to meet with Mogwai, and I think we just finished with The Sword, and we were on this uh, West Coast tour with Black Cobra, and uh, we did a basement show in uh, Boise, Idaho. This was a while ago, maybe yeah, two yeah, years. Yeah, that was a good, that was, it that was, was one of the awesome. ones that came to mind. Just so rowdy, it's just, yeah. it's crazy, the adrenaline it was, it was, you get. It was a room you know? just like this, pretty much. Imagine yeah. if Torch had all our equipment set up in this room right here. Crazy. And it's just like... Certain energy, when yeah. you know, you can barely breathe, and like, everyone's just rocking out, like... Just as hard yeah, as it can. It's the loudest shit ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how does that compare with playing clubs? Like, I mean, on tour. Well, clubs are so fun and it's yeah. awesome. You know, like it's just, I think the one thing that, you know, you almost have a guarantee of uh, at the small shows or house shows mm -hmm. is uh, a way more fun vibe and people just like going off. You yeah, know? I think sometimes sound too. You know what you're gonna yeah. sound like when you play someone's basement, pretty much. You know, but like. It's pretty, much, it's pretty much all the raw sound. Yeah, there's less variable. Like you know, when you play clubs, you get to kind of depend on sound guys. It's and way more it's, And it's and, awesome. some, and sometimes when you deal with sound guys, like you know, they don't really know how to mix really loud bands in some <laughs> of these clubs. They just have like a house sound guy who's not even into the stuff we're doing. So it's like you, some nights, you know, we're selling shit. <laughs> yeah. So how did Hydrahead come into all this? Uh, well, we toured with ISIS. And, oh, okay. Uh, Aaron, Aaron just liked our band a lot. And we played at LA and Mark, I guess, might have liked us too. <laughs> How did you get on the on tour with ISIS to begin with? I think we uh, we toured Europe, and uh, I know uh, 
Aaron Turner and Maury Thompson were out at the show at, um, at this really awesome club called The Underworld, mm -hmm. and I didn't get to speak to him that night, but I know um, some of the other guys did, and I, that was probably a few months before we got the offer, so I think them seeing us, they, you know, probably liked us, and, or Aaron, rather, and he, we got the offer, and that was, that was actually an awesome tour for us. Are the Hydra Head guys cool? Like they seem like no, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they have so many good bands, man, that have yeah. been on that label, like Cave In and like and the Clouds guys are here too. Tonight. Yeah, so that's know. pretty sweet. No, yeah, um, I think they they keep it real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. They they definitely keep it real. Uh, I think we've been pretty lucky. We've worked with two labels that are awesome. Mm -hmm. Hydra Head dudes treat us great, and they're all really cool guys. Yeah. And, they pretty much go out of their way for us a lot, you know. So, uh, and then we worked with the Robotic Empire before this, and uh, Andy, the guy who runs Robotic Empire, is one of the best dudes we know. I mean, he's pretty much the reason why we're here today. Like, he's pushed us so hard, like harder than harder than anyone else would have pushed us in the beginning yeah. when we first started. Can you give me examples of how he pushed you and motivated you? Well, he, he had the band going by uh, putting Steve in contact with Rick. Oh, and that's what yeah. kind of like I, I'm an old friend of Andy's, you know, and uh, we were both fans of Floor. And then uh, and Andy pretty much put me in touch with me. He was like, hey, Floor dude needs a drummer. You know, are you living in Miami still? And I was like, yeah, I can do this shit. So I went and I, I tried out, and then we jammed one time, and that's kind of like it. It just worked. And uh, then we, we needed a bass player, too. I so. told him to get me an arm. Get me an arm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I told him that I was doing it, and we needed a bass player, so... I mean, him and I were already playing in other bands together and stuff, and so on, so... I mean, it was just, it was easy. It was easy yeah. for us. Yeah, just, you know, once the, after the first few practices where, like, I know my, myself, I just caught up, like, learning certain songs that, that uh, Steve and Juan had written, mm -hmm. and, like, I guess at that point, like, they had a few leftover songs that were supposed to be, uh, you know, floor songs, and we kind of picked those up, and after that, like, we wrote, you know... I guess the rest of the record and it was pretty good vibes and you know released the record with Andy and did uh, an EP after that too like shortly after and uh, I guess like for the new record um, Andy uh, asked us how we felt about him passing us over to Hydrahead mm -hmm. if Hydrahead would be interested and we told him you know we'd be fine with it having already toured with Aaron yeah. and I like, briefly have met uh, Mark yeah. so it kind of it was just real smooth that everything on the you know label end or whatever you want to call it, it's been, like pretty like easy and smooth for us. Yeah, that's really There's cool. good people, you know. It was okay. like I, I remember when we when we did the switch to Hydrahead, it was good for us. It was I feel like it uh, it was almost like a new breath of like life or energy in the band, like you know, because like there was like something there was like something new to look forward to, like you know, like a new a new relationship to be made, you know, with yeah. with new people that we were gonna be working with. So it's kinda it's kinda interesting when you work with the same people for like two or three years straight and like you just get so comfortable working with them and then when new people get thrown in the in the mix, you get curious to see what changes will be made, you know, and, and if there be any and, progress. And, yeah. You know. And and totally it's been nothing but progress right now. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Does the music industry like ever phase you? We're lucky, I guess, in the position we are. We're so like you know on the independent level or whatever. Yeah. But we hear things, and there are certain people that pop up and services that get offered, and mm -hmm. I, I'm disconnected from that like weird like we're gonna make it and like, yeah. you know the whole major label deal. Like I, it's just I wouldn't be comfortable with somebody having complete control over my life or our lives and our musical direction stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. which there's bands that are at that level and are complete control. Uh, as far as their music, you know, but it's just, I don't know, I'm definitely into the level we're at, you know, with room to grow, but I like the uh, situation we're in with, like, you know, Hydra Head and us writing our own stuff or whatever. Yeah, you know, with all the touring that you do, do you ever meet bands that have these crazy huge egos that you're just like, dude, I don't understand why you guys even have this ego pick? I think you meet people like that everywhere. Yeah. No matter what you're involved in, like they might not, not be even bands. Not, <laughs> not not even just bands, like just other people you end up dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, different, just different places, like in every part of the music industry, or whatever. How does that affect how you guys function as a unit? Not at all. Really? Whatever. People want to act like dickheads. They can act like dickheads. Like, yeah. doesn't mean we're gonna be assholes back. You know? yeah. I mean, well, maybe no. <laughs> we might be assholes <laughs> back, but but the, you know. But I mean, we you different. know. Yeah, it's it's one of those things, though. You know, I mean, it doesn't affect the way we're gonna treat anyone. You know, like. Uh -huh. Anyway, 
so I don't know. Is it hard to manage relationships and, like, you know, all your friends back home, like, being on the road all the time? Yeah, you definitely can. Friends, not so much, but, like, personal relationships can yeah. be kind of rough. Like, this, come, uh, the beginning of December, when we finish all this touring in, in uh, the UK, like, we would have, it's, I think we would have had two months at home mm-hmm. out of the last six months. So, it, it gets a little hard, you know. But, uh, it's the best job you can have, you know. Are there times where you guys feel like... Maybe you shouldn't be doing this. I, I just feel lucky to be doing this. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, touring can get you know at some points so I can get old or whatever. But you gotta remind yourself when you're at home and you need to like get a job or you know go to school, whatever. Like mm-hmm. just me personally, I, I couldn't work for anybody. You know, so I, I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to do this. You know, and have fun and get you know a decent amount of money, I guess. When you go home. Um, well, you guys are probably on the road all the time now, at this point. Well, yeah, we're about to take a break. Our first yeah. long break in a long time. How long is your break going to be? Three months. Three months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So what goes on when you guys go home for three months? Relax. Just yeah. chill. Relax. Probably get a job. Hang out. How does that work when you're you're touring? You know, that's that's a different life that you, you have. You definitely you don't, don't tell the employer you, you, that you yeah. can't. You need, basically, you need to just get lucky and try to find a job that understands what you're doing and will let you leave and come back. But, like, it's really hard to find. A lot of people don't find that. And, like, for years I dealt with coming back and having to fucking find the job every time I came back from tour, you know? So it, it sucked, like, for a long time. But I think, like... I actually don't even know if my current job is going to take me <laughs> for sure, but I really like my current jobs. And What's my, your current job? Uh, I work at a state park. Oh, that's doing, sweet. Doing, I work at like a kayak rental place, and we do like tours and stuff through the river. It's cool. It's, it's, it's totally a chill life for me back home, so I don't I don't mind not being on tour when I'm working. It's yeah, definitely not something bad to go to. It's like a real nice state park. It's real cool. Yeah. So, when you, so you go home, you, you get your job. If they don't hire you back, you try to get another job just to kind of... Yeah, kind of keep afloat. Yeah, pretty much. I try. It's yeah, crazy. <laughs> like you know, we we don't make we don't make enough money doing this yet to to you know, I guess take month be, a month even. Like, yeah. we're, we're not we're we're the, I don't think we're financially stable as a band no. like at all yet. But you know, maybe maybe with all the hard work. You know, the you know, more time you put into it, you know, we're hoping that, you know, we'll continue to progress as like, we have up until this point. So as, as Torch is a band, is there a certain message that you're trying to put out there to people? Yeah, have, not take themselves too seriously. Have fun yeah. and smile, like even though it's heavy shit, I don't know. <laughs> have fun, yeah, just have fun. Yeah. That's what, what are, all comes down to. What are some bands that you want to tour with or, you know, would love to tour with in the future? We, we we got to play with Melvin and recently. Oh, we were just, just going to bring them that. Back. That would be a, an, a great toy I'd love to do. Dude, what are they like, like as people? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, they're real, like, real nice. Super nice, super modest about everything. Yeah. yeah. Very humble. Definitely a group of people I was kind of nervous to, you know, actually yeah. interact and meet. But like, once I said hi to them and you know started talking to them, like. It was a great time, and I, I, I just feel like lucky to have hung out with them. And they actually came; uh, they traveled over an hour to one of our shows in Japan, and they were playing the next day with us. But they just wanted to meet and hang out and whatever. Yes. It was just real awesome. Really friendly. Yeah. What do you guys tell uh, to younger bands you know, that look up to you? What do you tell them as far as advice? And, and I mean, the music industry has changed so much in the past five years. Yeah. Uh, when we meet kids that look up to us, I think it's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just like any anybody who's into music, you know, can relate to to that. Like, you know, like meeting somebody that you, you you're into their music. It's kind of hard to believe a lot of the time, and like it's kind of like so long, it's a, almost sort of like a weird, surreal thing that every time it happens, like we almost kind of like. Yeah, we're, it, we're, like, we're, we're, we're at a level where when we get that, we're like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, yeah, like, it's like, we can't, almost, we almost can't even take it seriously, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, we don't, we don't really think of what we do as something as amazing. Some of the, you know, these people are, like, yeah. talking about, like, oh, this song's fucking, it's like a life-changing thing. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just like, 
Damn, like, really? No. Really, no. yeah, we you know, we thought that shit was the goofiest shit in the yeah. studio. And we almost didn't fucking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, almost didn't even ride that one out. But. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting to see how, like, people perceive things, you know, like, we're just, like, we're just trying to have fun with it, yeah. you know, and it's cool, and it means a lot to people, and, like, yeah, we're definitely awesome. up there playing songs that we love, and we have fun playing, you know, so it's cool to, like, actually see people like, react to it, you know. Do you think that, you know, what Andy said about um, Nirvana and you guys, with that comparison? Let me just check our guys at these real quick. Cool, just got a clock. Sure. Ready, yes. Thank you. Hold on, you're doing your interview right now? Yeah. I'm sorry, man. No, man, it's That's cool. cool. Thanks, brother. Do you think that music in general um, is all about perception and how it's presented and how people interpret it? Yeah, I think so. Like, there's certain bands, like, as, as a, like, I was just saying about this last night, like, one band specifically, uh, Pink Floyd, I've loved them, you know, since the first time I've heard them. Yeah. And as I get older, I, I just, I'm loving it more and more, and I'm getting yeah. more and more into it, and, like, it's... There's some like dark stuff in there. Uh, just like I think as I, as I get older, I'm like you know finding out how dark that shit really is. Yeah. Like I appreciate it. You could always find something new. I think in certain bands, and you know like I don't know. It's interesting. Like as you grow, you know as a person, you can connect with something that you've been listening to for a while and just find new things in it. It's exciting.